Uh, the bottom line for me is there is a narrative building in this country, and again, you can stand down. This is just me speaking for me. Justice Ginsburg was an iconic figure in American history, just not the law. She was a trailblazer. She fought for better conditions for women throughout society. She was unashamedly progressive in her personal thought. She was uh, devout to her faith. Uh, she worked for the ACLU. She was proudly pro-choice personally. But all of us on this side, apparently when they voted, accepted that she was highly qualified. What I want the American people to know, I think it's okay to be religiously conservative. I think it's okay to be personally pro-choice. I think it's okay to live your life in a traditional Catholic fashion and you still be qualified for the Supreme Court. So all the young conservative women out there, this hearing to me is about a place for you. I hope when this is all over that you, there'll be a place for you at the table. There'll be a spot for you at the Supreme Court like there was for Judge Ginsburg. And to President Trump, I don't know if you're listening or not, by picking Judge Barrett, you have publicly said you find value in all of these characteristics, but beyond anything else, you find Judge Barrett to be highly qualified. I would say you're one of the greatest picks President Trump could have made, and from the conservative side of the aisle, you're one of the most qualified people uh, of your generation. Let's talk about Brown versus Board of Education, because I know Senator Blumenthal will. I'm going <laughs> to talk about that. You said in writings it was a super president. What did you mean? Well, in my writings, so as a professor, I talked about the doctrine of stare decisis. And super precedent is not a doctrinal term that comes from the Supreme Court. And I think maybe in political conversation or in newspapers, people use it different ways. But in my writing, I was using a framework that's been articulated by other scholars. And in that context, super precedent means precedent that is so well established that it would be unthinkable that it would ever be overruled. And there are about six cases on this list that other scholars have identified. Let's talk about Brown and talk about why it would be unthinkable. <clears throat> First, let's talk about what's the process that would lead to it being overruled. What would have to happen? For Brown to be overruled, you would have to have Congress or some state or local government impose segregation again, open segregation. Okay, let's schools. stop right there. If you want to make yourself famous, by the end of the day, you can say we want to go back to segregation. I promise you, you'll be on every cable TV channel in America. I doubt if you'll go very far, but the point we're trying to make here is the court just can't wake up and say, let's revisit Brown. It has to be a case in controversy. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So before a Brown decision, could you could review Brown, somebody out there would have to be dumb enough to pass a law saying, let's go back to segregated schools. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say. Do you see that happening anytime soon? I do not see that happening anytime soon. Yeah, I don't either. 